Hey everybody, today we're going to be swapping out the cam chain tensioners on this Harley Davidson twin cam motor. We have all the parts as well as the gasket kits required for this job. And we're going to be adhering to the by the book method. We're not going to be cutting out the push rods with bulk cutters. We will be using an inattention of removal tool. Furthermore, this video will also include the removal of the lifter blocks and the lifters so they can be checked and inspected, something that is encouraged. It also includes the removal of the oil pump, something that is not required. You'll see it, but you don't have to do it. To that end, we have the cam gear cover and gasket and seal kit, both the inner and outer chain tensioners. This is the cam locking tool. This is the front tensioner locking tool. This is the rear tensioner locking and removal tool. And only for oil pump removal, I have a tappet guide alignment tool. We're gonna do some prep now, let's get started. We're gonna have to remove the exhaust system to do this job. Half inch will remove the nuts from the studs. Let it soak with the penetrating oil if necessary. This is a one plus one exhaust, so both pipes need to be removed together. Some bikes, you only need to remove the front exhaust to do this job. When removing an exhaust like this, it's important to take the time. The goal is not to damage anything while attempting to repair the bike. You don't want to go and hit a rocket box and scuff it. Possibly some oil may come out of here, so I got a catch pan below, as well as a rag over the brake linkage. With a 316s hex, I'm going to loosen these bolts in a cross pattern. All these bolts can be removed and collected with the cover as they are the same size. The cam cover is then covered with a towel and with a rubber or naugahyde mallet, it is gently tapped in a couple of different directions to break its seal from the gasket. As the seal breaks, you could hear the sound from the hammer change. Right there. First thing before anything, I'm checking for cam tension and material. Nothing else, not cleaning, not doing anything. I want to see if there's material. This cover's clean. Now I'm looking in the cam chest, in the bottom, in the recesses, and I'm looking for the material for the cam tensioner. Again, I'm not seeing any material. That's a good sign. If I saw material, I'd have a good feeling we probably came late to the game. The rear tension is hard to see, but from what I could see, it looks uh, to be quite worn. The front tensioner is worn to much less of an extent than the rear tensioner is, but still worn. I'll use a three quarter wrench and a vice grip to open up the front one so we could take a look at it without using the tool so we get a good view of it. So I'm going to deflect it away. And as I deflect it away, we could see that it is worn and pieces of it are also gouged away. So not good. We'll be pulling out the push rods from the top. So we're going to be removing the rocker boxes. Half inch will loosen the cover. I'll do it in a cross pattern. Take notes that these bolts are two different sizes depending on the low side of the high side of the bike, so they should be kept in order. Low side are the short bolts, high side are the tall bolts. Cover lifts out, everything is brought to the table, put back in order. Same process is repeated on the rear cover, pulled out and put on the table in the rear cylinder section. Even on the table, tape is used to differentiate the parts just in case things get mixed up, I know what is what. Next to come off would be the rocker arm assembly, but we have to make sure there's no tension, the push rod's fully down, and both valves closed. So we're going to remove the spark plugs to be able to rotate the engine. A motorcycle jack will be required at this time to bring the back wheel just off the ground that it might be turned. We're not using a motorcycle jack and don't recommend doing this as it exerts all the weight on the kickstand as shown. Do this at your own peril. If you could go in and, and kick them up in a fifth while I spin this wheel, sure. we're neutral now, so. I'll give it a turn. Give it a bump. Thank you. Very good. Yes, sir. Thank you. With the bike now in fifth gear, we could rotate the rear tire in order to bring both valves to fully closed on whatever cylinder we're going to be working on. We're working on the back cylinder first. However, the camera work here is showing an example of the front cylinder checking that both valves are closed. Closing. There's the exhaust opening. 
The intake opening, exhaust is closed. Okay, slow down. That should be nearing top dead center. They're both closed. They're both closed? Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna open that up and make sure I can spin the uh, push rods with my fingers. We repeated that task on the back cylinder and now we're gonna remove these caps so we could access the push rods and we're gonna make sure that we could spin them with our fingers. So I can turn this one no problem, so that's not under tension. And this, oh, open that up. And I can turn this one with ease. So the back one is no longer under tension. These are both low up top. We also used this indication down here to also show us the alignment. So yeah. While everything is still together, it took a moment to wipe off some oil so we could use a paint marker and make a small dab. And that way, if anything becomes out of order, we know exactly where the chain was in relation to the teeth of the sprocket. Everything will go back exactly as it was before. Now we have to take off the rocker assembly. Very important, middle bolts done before the outer bolts get done. And we'll loosen these first with a 3 8 Outer bolts will be half inch. The whole unit could then lift out bolts and all from the high side of the bike and be put off to the table. The push rods will then be removed one at a time, wiped down, annotating which side was up and which slot it was in, be it exhaust or intake, and that'll be put on the piece of tape so it'll go back in the correct location come installation time. At this time, they're also inspected for any bending or wear on either of the sides and if need be replaced. I'll make another mark here on this sprocket with the paint pen for good measure. And as I pull out these push rod tubes one by one so I could annotate them, I realize that they are entirely nasty inside. They're going to need to be cleaned. So they're going to go off to the table, but they're definitely not going back in this condition. I'll leave the seals in the bike for now. The same exact process we did on the rear cylinder Intake is now repeated for is the front open. cylinder. Intake is closed. Hoop. That uh, was well, your compression stroke because it just spits your uh, paper towel out the plug hole, so you should be good. Caps removed, push rod tubes lifted, push rods turned, spin freely, rocker arm assembly unbolted and removed from the motorcycle, push rods removed and cleaned, and finally the push rod tubes removed. It's no longer necessary to have our unsafe jack holding this bike up, so we'll lower it and remove it. We'll be removing the lifters for inspection, but if you weren't, you would need to hold them so they wouldn't fall in as you remove the cams. A clip like this can be used by removing the metal brackets at the end of the clips, inserting them like so, and using spring tension to hold one lifter onto the other so that they don't fall in. We won't be doing this, however. We'll be removing the lifters. The lifters are held in by four 3 16 hex. I found with the back ones initially, it was easy to break tension with a hex key. then the whole block with the four bolts lifts right off. Better to just break off those two tabs on the gasket before they fall into the engine. The flats of the lifters are held in place by the small round cylinder which I'll now remove. Now the lift is lifted out paying attention to which direction it was pulled out from. Take note of the small hole on the side of the lifter and working with one lifter at a time, I turn it over, check the mating surface that goes to the cam, make sure it's not scored and then rotate it with my thumb to make sure that the bearing is still good. lift is still good, I'll annotate its position and put it away. Only then will I remove the next lifter, marking which direction it came out of from the lifter block. Inspected and checked, it's also put away. I repeat the exact same process on the front cylinder's lifters. Before the next step, we decided to rotate the chain so it matched up to the timing I marks on the smidgen. sprocket oh, to top perfect. dead center. Right there. And then tapped in the locking tool. So now we have the locket tool in place and the wheel on the ground and the transmission in fifth gear. I think we're pretty much stable. Now I'm gonna remove the snap ring on the outer tensioner. 
top bolt is loosened with a 916 socket. The bottom bolt is then loosened with a half inch socket. And here's the tool for the outer chain tensioner. I place it right on here like that. And with an adjustable wrench, I'm able to turn it just like that. I pull the locking tool out, but it should have been kept in. It would have held the chain and sprocket under tension and everything together. As Jason holds tension on the wrench, the two sprockets are shimmied off, keeping the chain and the sprockets together with the bolts. Just trying to hold everything together so nothing falls apart. Just like that. Tension is then released on the chain tensioner tool. I'll point out that this bushing fell out during that removal, but it goes right here. I'll pull it out one more time. You can see it goes right here. Now the chain tensioner and the tool just slide right off. Now I'll now attempt to wiggle off that tool. Clean it up for a second. And we could see the pitting and where yeah, it's already, this thing is ready it's to go. Fine. It's all the parts starting to degrade. Fair warning here. If you are not servicing the oil pump, do not remove these four bolts labeled one through four. Oil pump removal is not required for this job. But we are doing it on this bike. With a 316s hex, I will now remove all of these bolts in a cross pattern. One of them is behind this black plastic skid that I'll now remove. This is actually in very good condition, near new condition actually. All these bolts are the same size, but I still try and keep everything together as I slide this whole piece off. Being very careful, the cams are behind it. Now I could probably clean up the gasket surface down here. As previously mentioned, the push rod tubes are really nasty. They're all going to need work. But we still have to deal with the inner tensioner, and that means removing the snap ring. I removed the snap ring with snap ring pliers. The video cut out at this exact moment. Now I'll be using our inner or secondary tensioner removal tool for our next task. It goes over the whole unit. There's a cutaway meant to wrap around that spring. And then there's a small screw here that goes through those two teeth to hold everything together. When I pull those two bars together, it takes the tension off. And as I hold it, I'm able to just wiggle the piece right out, just like that. We can see how it holds everything in place. And then I can just slowly release tension. And take a look at that. There wasn't much life left on this thing. This thing was just ready to go. And just pull it right out. And that concludes part one in this project. In part two, we'll be putting in the new tensioners and reassembling this bike. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?